Hello everyone and welcome to the tastebetter.com newsletter for Monday, January 18th. And I'm really excited about this one. We're trying a few new things with the PowerPoint. I'm upgrading my skills. No transitions yet though. Don't don't you worry about that. This week we are going to talk about the only way to win sometimes is not to play. I've got some interesting ideas on that. A little bit about the survey we went to last week. Uh, office hours are returning this week. Very excited about that. And then what else is going on? So, hi. And, you know, American people out there, if you're reading this on a Monday, apparently it's a holiday for you guys right now. Hope you're enjoying the long weekend. I didn't know it was a holiday. I didn't know until uh, somebody emailed me and reminded me about it. Because I gotta say, when you do the stuff you really love doing, every day is a long weekend. And I always used to hear that, but uh, I can definitely tell you it's true because uh, I'm really, really enjoying what I'm doing right now and having a lot of fun want to give a big shout out to all the 8 zillion new subscribers we had. This is just on the email. This is not through YouTube or other places. Uh, Crystal, Jane, Martha, Melanie, Sarah, Swati, Liz, Robin, Rhea, DK, Abra, Crystal, Christine, Aaron, Helen, Jessica, Heather, and Jeffrey. Welcome to Team Tasty. Uh, it's a lot of names to go through. That's a, definitely a spike this week. I hope it continues. And please forward this uh, video or forward the email if you're getting it to your friends to get them to sign up as well. But I really want to take the time to acknowledge people for uh, signing up. Uh, I learned so much from you guys. I hope you learned something from me. So with that, here is the lesson of the week. Sometimes the only way to win is not to play. Uh, because, you know, there are a lot of you that tell me you're looking for ways to deal with meat eaters who, you know, they're less than supportive, let's say, of your choices. And this week I've got an idea on how you're actually being perceived that might help you uh, sort some of that stuff out. First, though, you got to meet Bob and Barry from accounting. Uh, it's not their real names, um, you know, and they're probably not from accounting. But if you work in an environment where there's anybody over 40, uh, you've probably met Bob and Barry. You, you've got Bob and Barry in your lives, too. And Bob and Barry, you know, they're getting older. And they've got a little competition going to see who can get older faster. But in this case, older doesn't mean wiser, it doesn't mean more experienced, more enlightened, or anything positive. To Bob and Barry, getting older means getting closer to the grave. And I don't know who was the first one of them to start talking about taking blood pressure medicine. But, you know, let's say it's Bob, and you better believe Barry was jealous. He didn't get to tell the story of getting older first. Oh, man, Bob beat him. And all Barry could do is tell everyone else about Bob. And, you know, he's just one doctor's visit away from getting even more powerful drugs. Because, you know, what can you do? We're all getting older. We need help. Oh, and those young pups in the office. You know, Bob and Barry can't wait until they start to break down like they did. You know, and some of these kids even try to exercise every day. Bob tried that once, but, you know, it's a good thing Bill, you remember Bill, right? He's in accounting, too, but uh, he passed away last year. You know, Bill talked him out of it, you know, because it's all about quality of life. And you're going to get older one way or the other, so why waste time in the gym? And Bob and Barry love this game, but when you really look at it, it's just a competition to see who has the worst life. And these games are fun, because it's really, really easy to get in the top ten. But here's the thing. When you tell people you're vegan, you're telling them you've decided you're vibrant and healthy and you're not going to compete in that game anymore. And, you know, just think about what Bob and Barry must feel about that. You know, it's like you're a kid who's decided to pack up her toys and go home. And the reaction you get from meat eaters sometimes, it's kind of like that. But, you know, really when you get down to it, secretly a lot of them, they're not upset because you're a sore loser. Uh, they're upset because not only did you take your toys and go home, but your home is a magnificent castle. And Bob and Barry can't live in a castle like you do because it means they'd have to give up their favorite game. And even though that's exactly what you did, and you're clearly thriving because of it, you know, they still believe they can't have what you have. So they mix it into their game. You know, there's something into their, your situation that makes it impossible for them to do what you do. Or maybe it's just too far out of their belief system. Because remember, they've been playing this game for years, their whole lives in some cases. And they know it's not going to work. And you're going to end up just like them anyway. And most commonly of all, Bob and Barry are waiting for you to give up, come out of your beautiful castle, and rejoin their game. And the way I see it, you've got two options here. You can stay in your castle and enjoy life and just ignore the Bobs and Barrys of this world, but frankly, they're not going to go away, and they're still going to be bitter that you're not playing with them. The other option is to try and get them to build their own castles, and I know Bob's is going to have a moat with a yacht in it. That's just how Bob secretly rolls. So when you're dealing with the Bobs and Barrys of this world, Drop a little details about your castle from time to time. That project you worked late on, that couldn't have happened without the mental clarity you get from a clean diet. Bob and Barry are competing to see who had the worst night's sleep? Huh, you slept like a baby and you woke up refreshed and alert. And maybe it's because you didn't load up on hard-to-digest foods at 9pm like they did. 
Bob and Barry are going to come around, but you have to recognize the game they're playing and realize what it really means when you change the rules. So that's something to think about this week, and please let me know what, you, uh, what your thoughts are. Either comment on this video, drop me an email, tastebetter.com slash contact. And we're going to move on now to the survey results, because last week I had a survey about dating. Uh, because I was interested in uh, where people were in the dating world, see if there's something we can do to help with that. But before I get into the results on that, I want to announce the book I quoted from last week because I didn't uh, tell the author uh, or didn't say what the book was last time because I didn't want it to get away from the, uh, the ideas that I was trying to get across. So here it is. The Game, Penetrating the Secret Society of Pickup Artists by Neil Strauss. That's right, Pickup Artists. Turns out, they're really persuasive guys. And I've found that uh, persuasion in one niche often translate really well into another, such as like activism and outreach. Uh, and in this case, you know, with activism and outreach, it avoids a lot of the ethical quandaries that are faced by the seduction community, for example, which, uh, as I said during this week's office hours, last week, sorry, uh, those can be huge. Uh, but the book was a lot of fun, and you might get some insights into activism along the way, like I did. Uh, so you should probably check it out. I, I found it an entertaining book, and I, I learned a lot that wasn't necessarily the author's intent uh, in there, so that was kind of fun. But back to the survey. Uh, I was really amazed with how many people responded. Uh, that was really, really, really awesome. And so here's a couple quick breakdowns. Most of you were women, and uh, as you saw from the list of names that I gave of new subscribers, that's probably more a function of a list, but the general consensus is there's a lot more vegan women than men out there, and I think the survey just kind of reinforced that. Most of you guys are in relationships already. Uh, and you know, maybe your the response rate was high just because you all wanted to brag. I don't know. But uh, a lot of you, the majority of you were already in relationships, so that's great. And those of you that were or your past relationships, your partners were all over the map. I mean, some of you guys were vegans dating vegans, just as many of you were dating omnivores. Uh, a lot of you, which was really cool, both of you started out as omnivore, or one, or better still, both of you converted to vegans over time. So there's all kinds of different combinations represented. And lastly, I don't think this should come as a surprise, vegan men said that the uh, pickings were awesome, and vegan women said, you know, the options, their name's Slim and None, and uh, Slim left town. Uh, lots more vegan women than men out there. Uh, so I'm not sure what to do about that. But I'm still working through those ideas, and I think... The ideas I had last week about uh, what I should do totally changed based on the input in this survey, so thank you so much. This week, simple question for you. How many vegans do you personally hang out with in your city or town? And, and let me know if they're family or not. You know, about 80% of my social circle is vegan, but I know that's not the case for a lot of you. So if you can give me some idea of what you personally are dealing with, uh, that's going to go a long way to helping me be more effective in uh, the stuff I do. Okay. So, office hours, we started them last week. Uh, this is the live version. We do a live video stream with a little text chat and everything uh, of going through the newsletter, but some other stuff too. Did it last Thursday at 2. Had a blast. Definitely doing again this Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. That's New York City or Toronto time. Uh, you can go to tastebetter.com at that point, and there'll be a link to where to go, uh, or you can just read the link in the newsletter if you go to uh, the actual Taste Better site if you're a subscriber. But uh, check that out. This week we're going to cover uh, what's in this newsletter, tie it in with some site posts, answer some questions, and I think I'm going to prove why the moon landing was a hoax, just because. Just uh, and that time, 2 p.m., is totally arbitrary, so please let me know if that uh, doesn't work for you and find a better one. Very quickly this week, uh, more stuff. Posted something on Taste Better today about uh, fighting the rise of fur. Really happy about it. And I've got a really exciting uh, our post going up on Wednesday about how to avoid burnout. So I'm looking forward to that. And we'll do usual stuff on Thursday and Saturday. Vegan porn, newsletter's going out. That's veganporn.com. Uh, I say that the uh, name might not be safe for work, but the content is. But... Uh, well, there's something interesting going on right now. Nothing you wouldn't see on a nature show on TV, but you've been warned. Uh, you check that out. And Barnivore.com, our vegan booze guy, keeps getting updated, working on the mobile interface some more. And SpawnBetter.com, our vegan parenting site, we're going to talk about how to deal with animal industry propaganda on children's television. Uh, just getting started on that, but that will be this week. So... Thank you so much for subscribing. I spent like five hours last week replying to emails, and I loved every minute of it. Please get in touch, tastebetter.com slash contact, or other ways to get in touch with me. You can go on to Twitter, twitter.com slash tastebetter, facebook.com slash tastebetter, or youtube.com slash user slash tastebetter, and please subscribe on YouTube so you can get an email when the, uh, the next one comes up. But best of all, go to tastebetter.com slash newsletter, and you will get this every Monday. I will not spam your butts guarantee it and thank you again so much we will talk to you next monday or see you thursday on office hours two o'clock see you then